Hi there. So today I thought I'd take a closer look at my benchtop power supply. Now this is a pretty standard mid to actually low end uh, power supply that an electronics hobbyist might use. I think I paid around $100 for it. I'm not sure. It's a few years old now. Um, but you know, it's not a high end power supply. Uh, while it does have variable voltage and current, it only has single turn potentiometers, one for one for each, the voltage and the current. And in sometimes, uh, you know, it's a little hard to control. Uh, you know, sometimes you just barely touch, say, the voltage knob and the LCD here reads in about, oh, I would say like, you know, 10 uh, millivolt uh, increments and you just barely touch the knob and, and it's changed way more than that. So I'm looking at maybe putting in uh, some 10 turn potentiometers to, to replace these uh, stock ones. Um, you know, I'm not sure if it's going to work or not. I, I think it's going to be a pretty easy fix, uh, you know, a modification here, but, uh, you know, we'll see. Uh, so anyway, I guess let's uh, go ahead and take a closer look at it. Now we can take a look at how the power supply normally operates. Um, this is the brand. It says Hi-Q Power. Uh, it's actually also the same thing as Velleman. Uh, I think this is one of their, uh, their discount uh, brands. Um, and as you can see, it's a zero to 15 volt, three amp uh, variable uh, supply. Um, and, you know, once we, once we turn it on here, um, you see once it is set at a certain voltage and we can even and confirm, confirm the voltage uh, on the meter here. So it's reading pretty close. Um, but one thing is all I have to do is just barely touch this knob. See, I, I didn't even turn it. I really just kind of touched it uh, and almost thought about turning it and, uh, and it already starts to increment. You know, and sometimes if you need a very precise uh, voltage uh, or current, um, you know, you want a little more control than that. So that's why uh, I'd like to try putting in uh, some 10 turn potentiometers. Like I say, I'm barely, just barely touching this and, and look how much it jumps around. Almost 100 uh, millivolts uh, sometimes uh, when I'm actually just trying to maybe turn it into like say 10 millivolt increments. You know, if I wanted to try and get down to 4.1 um, volts, I can barely do it. Okay, there we go. So, uh, so it's really, really touchy. So like I say, I'm just going to open it up uh, and see, see what we got in there and hopefully we can change out the parts. So now I have the screws um, out of the case. Uh, there was four on each side and, uh, and then two on the bottom. And uh, as you can see, the metal chassis case will slide off. Um, you know, pretty, pretty standard looking power supply, big transformer. Uh, just the one uh, circuit board as far as all the actual power supply stuff. And then uh, there's the drivers and the circuit boards for the uh, LCD display on the front. So if we're really careful, we can take this off here. And I don't know if I'll be able to zoom in and show. I'll try here. You can see the markings on the two potentiometers on the front. Now that we're zoomed in, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it. I can't really zoom in uh, much further without the uh, focus going out. But uh, right here, it's marked uh, on both the uh, potentiometers. Uh, they're both marked the same. And uh, it says 6K8A. So, uh, you know, we're going to assume uh, 6.8K ohms. Um, and then... Uh, the A is usually stands for audio taper. Um, so, uh, and it just looks to be a regular, regular uh, panel mount uh, potentiometers on these, nothing, nothing too special. Uh, I think it's gonna be a little uh, bit of an issue, maybe because uh, finding this uh, exact item in a 10 turn potentiometer uh, probably isn't gonna happen, uh, but we'll see. So after a little bit of uh, research, yeah, I'm not going to be able to, to replace these with exact uh, replacements in a 10 turn. Um, you know, I couldn't find any 6.8K ohm 
potentiometers uh, that were, were 10 turn or even multi turn, uh, and also the audio taper. Um, it, it, I couldn't find any 10 turn or multi turn uh, potentiometers that just that were audio taper, just linear taper. So, you know, I, I'm hoping uh, what I did find, uh, which is these uh, 10K uh, ohm. Uh, 10 turn pots uh, got these at Jameco and I'll have the uh, part number uh, listed um, but anyway uh, I'm hoping this 10k will be close enough to the uh, 6.8k to to go ahead and work with our with our circuit here yeah uh, you know I don't know how this is working you know if it's uh, any kind of microcontroller in here that, that's reading the value of the pot and therefore it then outputs a certain voltage and current or if it's all just elect uh, you know the flow uh, of the electricity through this you know and it's actually just putting out whatever but then I don't know how the LCD uh, display is is reading uh, the current and voltage if it's actually displaying the output and current um, at the terminals or, or if it's some kind of calculation it's doing uh, with the processor so you know the only way to really find out is to go ahead and, and replace these and, and just see what happens. It's going to be an easy enough fix to put these back in if, if somehow it just doesn't work or, uh, you know, if I don't want to keep these 10 uh, turn pots in here. Uh, we will uh, have to observe that uh, the center lug is tied to this outside lug on both of these. So we'll have to uh, solder this up uh, the same way. So the front two knobs uh, for the potentiometers these are just, uh, they just slide on, uh, they're on there pretty good. Um, so that means it's a knurled shaft uh, on both of these. Um, let's see if I can pull this off here. All right, I had to get the uh, pliers out uh, to go ahead and pull pull off that other knob. So as I was saying, these are knurled uh, shaft, and uh, so our uh, our new ten term pot is a is a smooth uh, shaft. So we're gonna have to change out the knobs, but luckily I've got some knobs uh, in my uh, parts bin that are pretty small, and I think they'll be a good uh, replacement for the factory ones. Earlier I mentioned that these were regular panel mount uh, style potentiometers, and they are. Um, however, to get the, uh, the nut off of this, uh, I'm going to have to use these needle nose pliers to get in there. Um, I don't even think any of my sockets um, are going to be um, thin enough to, to get in between here and the plastic housing. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, take these nuts off here uh, so we can pull these potentiometers out. All right, so we got the uh, nuts off the uh, shaft here. Um, so these uh, potentiometers, they're just gonna pull right out. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do one at a time here. Um, and then that way, as far as disconnecting them, uh, just that way, uh, we can kind of see uh, if this is going to work or not before I take them both off and, and put the whole thing back together. Um, so I'm going to try uh, the voltage uh, one first, which is actually uh, the one on the bottom here. And uh, we'll pull that out and desolder this and uh, then try and solder up one of the 10 turn uh, potentiometers and then turn it on and, and see how, how it's going to work out. All right, so these just seem to be kind of tacked on here. Um, so I think as, as soon as I just heat this up, uh, this will come off. Yep, sure enough. Uh, so now we got the uh, black wire free there. I'm going to go ahead and tack this on uh, to the tin turn pot. I can clean that up a little bit more here in a minute. Now we'll 
unsolder this wire from these two lugs. I'm hoping that's just the, uh, the same wire across there. We'll find out here in a second. Hopefully they didn't use two pieces like a bus wire, but we'll find out. Nope. All right. It's the same. Oh, there we go. All right. Now then, so we're going to have to replicate that and take this wire and solder it across these two lugs. So in theory, we have this soldered up uh, the same way as the, uh, the factory uh, potentiometer was. Uh, so basically, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make sure none of you, these wires are touching anything or any of the chassis or anything. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and power this up um, and uh, see, see if we're actually within our same ranges earlier and, and we're actually able to uh, change the voltage in a, in a more controlled uh, manner than before. So now I have my multimeter hooked up to the output of the power supply. And it's all the way down at what should be zero. Um, it's reading 74 millivolts. And uh, sure enough, the, the front panel, that's, that's what it's reading to. So that's about as low as it's going to go. Um, however, like I say, I think I do have a little bit more uh, control. Uh, let's get it back up to, uh, to over a volt. Um, so there we have... 1.16 in the front panel of the meter, uh, sorry, of the front panel of the power supply is saying 1.16. So uh, we're, we're right on with that. Um, when I turn this, um, I'm able to turn it in a little bit smaller increments now. Um, I st it's still pretty touchy, um, but instead of moving around by 100 uh, millivolts, uh, we're only moving in 10 volt increments or so. Uh, and that's the resolution of the uh, front LCD anyway for the voltage it is about uh, in the 10 millivolt range. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm happy with that. Um, I have found, though, uh, because of the uh, 10K pot versus um, that 6.8K that we had, um, there is a little bit of a uh, drawback and that is this power supply is only rated at 15 volts. Um, and now, uh, as you can see, um, crank this up a little more and it's actually going well above the 15 volts. Um, so, you know, I can look into this a little bit more and, uh, you know, I could maybe, uh, put in another resistor, uh, in parallel, uh, you know, to try and try and bring that down, uh, back down to the 6.8 K. Um, you know, that that's going to limit some of the range, but as you can see, um, this is going up, uh, 17 volts now and even 18 and uh, about 19 it started to flash earlier i think to give me a warning about the uh the output um you know obviously i'm not going to run it uh up in this range so that's max so 23 volts i'm you know i'm not drawing any current right now um and you know i'm not going to run uh this at that high i'm going to turn this back down in fact now uh back down to to more what this uh power supply is rated for um so that's something I'm going to check into. Um, but basically, uh, I, I think this is going to work out. Um, as you can see, I'm having to turn this uh, quite a bit um, to affect the uh, output, uh, at least more than I was earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing uh, with the current uh, knob and take a look at that. So now the next challenge uh, is uh, Apparently the uh, shaft uh, where the screw mounts for the panel uh, is actually a little bigger than, than the factory uh, potentiometers. Uh, it just won't quite fit through this uh, front panel uh, hole. So I'm going to have to drill this out and, uh, and then we'll get it mounted.
Now I went and pulled those knobs I mentioned uh, earlier out of my uh, parts bin. Uh, these are just uh, normal uh, quarter inch uh, smooth shaft knobs with a, with a set screw to keep it in place. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and put these on. So another challenge I just had to uh, overcome was uh, <laughs> I didn't realize uh, the order of these lugs uh, was a little bit different than I thought. Uh, so I actually had it uh, soldered backwards as far as when you would turn it uh, clockwise, the voltage was actually going down uh, instead of the more conventional clockwise uh, turning something up. Uh, and that's how the front panel is marked. So I had to, uh, had to re, uh, solder that. Um, here's the deal though. Uh, the order of these lugs is to where the center, uh, wiper is actually on the outside. So, uh, luckily I keep around some bus bar wire, um, which is this wire right here. Um, so I had to make a little jumper. Um, now you could do this with any piece of solid core uh, wire, you know, like a 22 gauge uh, solid core wire. You could you could jumper those uh, across like that, uh, making sure not to get near near the other end here, uh, the, which is actually in the middle. Um, or you could even use, you know, uh, if you have some uh, leads uh, that you had snipped off of uh, through hole components. Um, but, uh, that's why you keep around the bus bar wire is, uh, you know, for easy things like this. Um, one other thing I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to go ahead and solder a 22 K ohm resistor across here. Uh, I actually just tested it out, uh, with a substitution resistor substitution box. And that actually did limit, um, uh, my upper end on my voltage, it took it to about 16 volts, which, which is where it was before, even though it's only, uh, says it's rated for, for 15. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, solder a resistor across here too. It's going to be a little bit of a, of a kludge, uh, you know, it's not going to look very pretty. Um, but, uh, hopefully it's going to give us the, the end results we're looking for. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so I've got this resistor now, uh, soldered in place. Um, so this 22 K, uh, in parallel with the 10 K should, should give us the, uh, 6.8 K, uh, ohms that we're looking for. Uh, like I say, this is not, uh, very pretty at all. Uh, this is pretty ugly, but, um, you know, I guess that's the, uh, price of, uh, you know, hopefully some progress on this. Uh, so basically I'm going to have to go do the same thing on the, uh, current, uh, potentiometer. I'm going to have to, uh, make this jumper and solder in, uh, the resistor for that as well. So I finally got the current, uh, potentiometer wired up correctly and was able to get that 22 K ohm, uh, resistor soldered across there and was able to go ahead and put everything back together. I got the, uh, new knobs, uh, on and they actually look pretty good. Um, you know, they're, they're a different color, but I think if you were to walk up to this, uh, power supply for the first time, you wouldn't even, uh, necessarily realize the knobs had been, uh, changed out on this. So we're going to go ahead and fire it up and we are at zero volts and sure enough, uh, on the meter, we're reading pretty close, uh, you know, only, uh, six and a half, uh, millivolts, uh, there. So, uh, as you see, as we turn the knob on the voltage uh, clockwise, uh, we are going up and we do match uh, pretty, pretty good there. And as you can see, as I touch this, now it, it's still very sensitive. However, we're only going up in increments of say um, 10 millivolts versus 100 millivolts. So when I do touch this, uh, I can get a finer resolution. Um, as you see, just about 10 millivolts if I want that down at 8.1, or sorry, 0.81. Um, so, uh, you know, and then we'll go ahead and turn this up, say, into a larger range, uh, say around 9 volts. And let's say I wanted to get a flat 9 volts. Um, it's not very, not very hard. And we're pretty close on the meter, on the multimeter there. So, in fact, we can 
go up there. So just about a 10 millivolt discrepancy uh, between the two. But actually, before I did this modification, uh, it, it had that uh, it had that difference on there. So and if we go ahead and crank this up all the way to the upper limit clockwise. So now that uh, range is is down to the 16 volts now instead of the 20 two or 23 volts we were getting at the upper upper range. So definitely putting in that 22K resistor uh, across there uh, helped, uh, brought it back down more in spec. And yeah, so anyway, I think uh, we have accomplished our goal. Uh, now this is just the voltage. So uh, I will try out the uh, current uh, also. So now just to show that the uh, current uh, knob and potentiometer do work um, and they work on a lot finer uh, scale. Uh, I've just got the power supply hooked up to a little noise maker circuit. I don't have anything really uh, to test it with right off right off hand here. Uh, but this will be this will show uh, that the adjustable current uh, potentiometer is working. So we're at uh, zero current flowing right now. And as I turn clockwise, uh, you should hear the noisemaker uh, come on and you'll see the current and uh, voltage both uh, increase. So there we go. So 10 milliamp. And I can keep turning it up very slowly. Kind of tops out around 60 uh, milliamps, um, but 16 volts. So um, let me turn it back off there. So the adjustable current is working and we can adjust that in pretty fine steps. Now, obviously a, a, a multimeter uh, hooked up to that, you know, that with a little more accuracy uh, than just what this uh, panel meters uh, show here uh, would work a little better uh, for getting a precise current or a, even the voltage too. Um, but as we saw, they're, they're pretty close. And uh, I think, uh, I think we, uh, have a success here. So all in all, I think I accomplished my goal today. Uh, I replaced these two single turn pots with two 10 turn pots. And, uh, you know, it only took about an afternoon and about $20 in parts. Uh, each pot was about nine or 10 bucks. And I'll link that in uh, down below. Um, but if you have one of these or a similar model, there's a lot of similar models. It looks like it's a pretty straightforward mod uh, on, on even probably the other models. I, I can't say for sure. But uh, the only tricky part was uh, realizing that because these were 10K pots and the factory pots were 6.8K, uh, uh, that we had to put the 22K resistor in parallel and that brought that down basically back down to the 6.8K. And uh, other than that, you know, I think think it's going to be good. Now I have a lot uh, finer control over the voltage and current that this puts out. And, you know, uh, without having to go spend more money on a, on a different power supply. And uh, so anyway, uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up or a like. And we'll do some more videos and, and hopefully we'll see you next time.